Hi, I'm Sissy Graham Lynch. Welcome to Fearless, helping you have a fearless faith in a compromising culture. Welcome to another episode of Fearless, and today we're going to talk about a tough subject. And I think we're seeing a trend in our society where churches and pastors are not addressing social issues and tough topics from the pulpit, and there could be a number of reasons for that. Uh, They don't want to offend anybody, which I think too bad. We already live in an easily offended culture, but if we're going to talk about Jesus and the gospel, he came to take the sins of the world away, which we have to address the sin. And that's unpopular amongst a lot of churches. I think maybe they misunderstand the nature of God. They don't want to lose numbers in their churches. There could be a number of reasons why they're not addressing these subjects, and we can talk about that at another time. But we're going to talk about homosexuality today because we see this um, being a very divisive subject, even in the church. So I believe we need to look at it. We need to see what scripture says about it because this isn't a political issue. It's not a social issue. This is a biblical issue. As a Christian, I view homosexuality as any other sin. I see it the same as my sin. I see it as the same sin as sex before marriage, adultery. All that sin nailed Jesus to the cross. So their sin, my sin, all nailed Jesus to the cross. He took it all. That whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So when I'm talking about the subject of homosexuality, I don't see any different. And I don't see my friend's sin any different than mine. And I think it's in our culture, we see a lot of uh, churches, uh, pastors, and faith leaders not wanting to talk about this subject, because I think the subject in 2019 has become personal to us. So many of us have, know somebody or love somebody, have a family member, a friend that now identifies in the LGBT community. So that sin has become very personal and deep to us that we've blurred the lines of what right and wrong is. And we don't want to talk about it because we don't want to offend those we love. And I think the church has kind of separated this to be um, something worse. And I think why that is, is because we have a culture now in this LGBT community that has really become aggressive towards Christians. I know from my own experience, after watching the Macy's Day Parade last Thanksgiving, my five-year-old girl was watching and there was a segment from the musical, The Prom. And my little girl asked me, Mom, why are those two girls holding hands? And I realized in that moment, I was going to have to give her an answer. And she's five, so I had to give her an answer that was okay for her age and a response. But I, I turned it off because the, the couple later kissed on national television. And I tweeted about the incident, Uh, nothing hateful, nothing hurtful, just saying I'm sad on Thanksgiving Day. I had to turn it off because my little girl was asking these questions. And all did the hate come in and the response to my tweet and the nasty comments that were made to me and that I received for weeks after. But we have to know as Christians, God warns us of that. They came against Jesus for speaking truth. And that's where you have to find your hope. You know, unfortunately, I think past generations haven't handled this issue correctly in the eyes of the public. The past generations were full of truth and hardness with the absence of grace. One of my favorite books is Randy Alcorn's book, The Grace and Truth Paradox. He reminds us that Jesus Christ is 100% grace. He's 100% truth. You can't have one without the other. And John 1.14 says, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And I just want to remind people as they face the subject of homosexuality or any other sinful subject, is that when you take a stand, you have to be doing it with grace and truth. Jesus couldn't do it with one and without the other, and neither can I and neither can you. Um, I just read recently a a scary statistic was um, out of Barnes study was only 24% of Generation Z of 
church Christians, so these are kids that would go to church, maybe not have a daily relationship with Jesus, but these are kids that go to church. These are the ages 13 to 18. Only 24% of them believe that homosexuality is wrong. And these are kids that go to church. So if it's not the church teaching this generation, they're not going to learn it from our government. They're not going to learn it from our schools. And now they're not going to learn it from church. And many parents don't know how to deal with the subject because they don't want to raise their kids to look hateful in a society. Where are our kids? Where is this generation going to hear truth from? And I want you as Christian encourage your pastors to talk about this subject lovingly or encourage the Sunday schools. Make sure you're taking the time. My little girl's five years old, and I already have to talk to her because she sees the rainbow flag flying outside of some churches. She goes, oh, mom, look at that church. That's a beautiful flag. And I've had to take the moment and say, Margaret, you are right. The rainbow is beautiful. And do you know why God gave us the rainbow? And she knows the story of Noah's Ark. And I said, God had to flood the world because there was so much evil in it. But he gave us the rainbow as a promise that he would never flood the world again. And that I have to teach her that people have taken God's promise and have turned it to be dirty and nasty. So even with my five-year-old in the world that we are, I already have to talk to her about it. But this is scary that only 24% from 13 to 18 who go to church think it's morally wrong. And if we're not careful, the next generation won't think it's wrong at all. You know, in 2019, for people who believe that homosexuality is wrong, we're obviously a minority. And you think of Hollywood, you can't turn on a movie or a TV show without there being a gay couple. I think of Ellen DeGeneres. I love her TV show. When you watch it, you feel good. She's joyful. She's kind. I don't think to me, people that know her could probably say a negative word about her. And I love watching it. And I realized one day how one woman has changed our society, has changed a generation of what right and wrong is and what truth is. You know, here's a lady that, you know, if Margaret watches her on, my little girl watches her on TV, she's funny in the games, and then she sees, you know, Ellen on the cereal box. And even though I have disagreements with her, obviously, in lifestyle, and I've not stopped watching her TV show. However, in recent times, I've just been contemplating of how one woman has changed a generation She's impacted a generation of, of a sin and has normalized sin. And this normalized sin has become personal to so many of us. And we have to really be careful in this time right now that we recognize it and that we take a stand, take a stand in those little moments, whether it's in our school rooms, whether it's in our conference rooms and stuff like that, not in an aggressive way, but even... Um, Maybe all your friends are going to a gay couple's wedding, and you go, well, I love this person, and I really want to go. Well, this is your moment to take a stand and to stand for what is right, that you can't celebrate sin. And a wedding is a celebration, and then maybe some conversations will strike up. You know, I've shared that I have many people that I love that are gay, but even on a daily basis, interaction with people. If you go to the grocery store, if you go shopping or you're at the gym, I come in contact with obviously a lot of people of the LGBT community. I'll never forget one time I was shopping in a store and this guy was helping me. Obvious he was gay. And he later came up to me and said, thank you so much for being so kind to me. I said, what do you mean? And he goes, you would be surprised of how many ladies come in here and so rude to me they don't want my help because I'm gay. And I said, well, you're welcome. And I just left it at that. I only saw him once or twice again since then. But I'll just never forget, you know, as Christians, we're called to be a light in this world. And we can't treat anybody differently, even though we can't allow things. So I think it comes in interactions. I'll I'll never see that person again. I don't know what happened to him. I still remember his name to this day. 
but it's our daily actions that we show the love of Christ, just the way if we treated our waiter or waitress or how we treat the flight attendant on the thing. You're always going to treat somebody with loving kindness to show the grace of Jesus. At least you should. Um, and the same with, with that. And I just know one of my favorite workout partners at the gym, I don't think he ever knew who I was. That I don't think he ever knew my last name or my maiden name. But he was my favorite partner at the gym. And I remember uh, seeing his Facebook page one time and going to it and thinking how hateful it was towards Christians. You know, and, oh, he said terrible things about Christians and about conservatives and things like that. And I could only imagine if roles were reversed and I had said stuff like that. But when I go back to the gym the next day, my thought on him didn't change. My love for him didn't change. He was still my favorite workout partner. I still went and worked out with him, even though he never knew where I stand. And, um, you know, I always just thought, well, maybe one day the opportunity will come up. But you have to make sure you always show grace with somebody. So when those opportunities that come up, you can then present truth. Because remember, you can't have grace without truth. So you have to show your grace before you present the truth. I think of what Jesus' love is, and that's the gospel. You know, he loved you. He loved me so much that he went to the cross, all of our sins. And those sins nailed him to the cross, but... When you love somebody, you want to tell them about the truth. You want to tell them about the greatest love story of all. And remember, Jesus calls us to be a light in the dark world. And being a light in the dark world doesn't mean love and kindness or love and grace. It means love and truth. Jesus couldn't be one without the other, and neither can I, and neither can you. If you love someone, you tell them the truth. And um, I think as a church— we are failing a generation because we have uh, pastors now who won't speak about homosexuality because it's a tough subject for so many of us. We even have Christians coming out and saying that they believe homosexuality is okay. And these aren't just kind of Christians we think are off in the corner and they're in their their dark corner of society and say, oh, we know that their theology is a little off. No, these are Christians who are having an impact in Christian conferences, in their books, in the bookstores. These are influential Christian leaders who are blurring the lines for so many of their followers. And that's a dangerous area where we put our opinion above God's Word. And I think we have to be so careful because we have to find our truth in God's Word. If we're calling ourselves Christians— We have to believe on God's word in his entirety. We can't look to other pastors for their truth. That's their human opinion. Prove it with scripture that it's okay. I think it's so dangerous. Like, who do these pastors think they are and these Christian leaders to try to define God's truth? God's word has not changed in 2,000 years. And it's not changing because this Christian leader, that's their opinion. You know, we have to be careful in our society and our church culture that a lot of pastors don't want to talk about this or this subject because it is sticky. I'll never forget watching a CNN interview with a very well-known pastor one time, and he was asked about homosexuality. And he says, well, I don't talk about it because Jesus doesn't talk about it. So he compromised with his answer to give a pleasing answer to this person. And in that moment— He lost the chance to tell about the greatest love story of all. He compromised that moment. But Jesus does talk about and does define marriage in Matthew 19, 4, 6. So we have to be careful as a world, where are we finding our truth? And we have to make sure we go to God's word and we have to stand truth. And I think in past generations, the subject maybe in the church wasn't handled correctly. It was full of hardness and uh, truth, but not enough grace. And now we have a generation that's focusing on grace and not always the truth of talking about sin. And the world is telling us it's okay. Our society, if we take a stand against homosexuality, The world will call us bigots. They will call us hateful. They will question us as, you know, and question God of that he's not a God of love. But that doesn't mean we can't stand boldly. We can do it in the right way and we can do it in love. 
and we can do it in grace, but we also have to do it in truth. But as Christians, if you call Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you believe the Bible is His Word, you have to believe in its entirety. We can't ignore what Scripture has to say. They are tough. They are hard. In Romans 1, 26, 27, um, because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust. Even their women exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. So Romans 1 is so clear where God stands on the issue of homosexuality. In Leviticus 20, you know, God calls um, homosexuality abomination to him. And we think that is tough. Like, how could a God of love, a God who created the universe, who says he loves me so much, call those people who I love, people in our community, that tough word? And that's when... I have to remember, I can't lean on my own understanding. I'm, I'm a sinful human being with this tiny little bit of wisdom, if you can even call it wisdom, over his infinite wisdom, the creator of the universe. So even on those tough subjects, that's when we have to lean on his word and believe in his sovereignty and trust him. There are people in the LGBT community that I love with my entire heart. And even since they've come out as gay, my love for them has never stopped. The text messages on their birthday, the continuing sending pictures of my kids to them to make sure they know I love them. But I can't blur those truths of what's right and wrong. And as Christians, we still have to know what we believe and why we believe it. We can't pick and choose out of God's word of what right and wrong is. We have to take it as a whole. I don't get to interpret God's word to fit the culture of 2019. God was the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And no, it doesn't make sense to us, a lot of it. And we'll have a lot of questions till the day we get to heaven. But I believe in God's sovereignty, and I believe the Bible is the word of God. I think in my own personal experience, I have people that I love so much. They're, I grew up with. These were people that were my best friends, and they grew up in Christian homes, and they know where I stand. I stand the same as I did, you know, 15 to 20 years ago growing up with them. They have pulled away from me. Uh, I don't live with in the same states. I don't live in the same towns as them, and so it's not like I can continue to take them out to coffee or continue to go do things, but... We have to make sure we're not always going to have those moments, the right moments to share the gospel of Jesus with them, Uh, especially on this subject. It's such a tough subject of when do you do it? You got to be in the right atmosphere and a time that the Holy Spirit prompts you that is sensitive to it. But we have to be careful that we are taking a stand publicly in a society, in a culture with the belief that homosexuality is okay. And if you don't believe it's okay, this world will disagree with you. They will call you names. They will call you bigots, hateful, whatever it is, because you are not accepting. And I think that's where we have to make sure we stand clear on this issue. And that's where we can stand out differently. It's in those moments that if our schools classrooms want to teach our young children that this is okay or if that you get to choose your sexual identity. No, as a parent, you stand up for that, and this is not okay, or my child will be taken out of this. It is when you get an invitation to go to your friend's wedding, even though you love them, this is a moment for you to stand for truth because maybe you haven't had the opportunities to share the gospel with them. And maybe they'll ask, well, why aren't you going to come? And they might be hurt. They're going to be mad at you. Of course they are. Look, I love you, but I as a Christian cannot celebrate this. Mm -hmm. Uh, Those are the moments you're going to have to decide uh, to take a stand. This is a hard subject for so many of us. And like I shared earlier, it is a personal topic for me with people that I love dearly. 
And I know you who are listening probably have somebody that you love so much that struggles with the same thing. Whether it's a family member, whether it's a coworker, a friend from high school, pray that the Holy Spirit will show you how to live as a light with grace and truth and to be able to share the greatest love story of all, the story of Jesus in this community and in those people that you love dearly. Today we discuss a tough topic of homosexuality, but that's what I want to do here at Fearless is to help you look at tough subjects from a biblical point of view. There are many more Bible verses about this subject, but I want to encourage you to study it, to know what God's Word has to say. It's not a gray area. It's very clear on where God stands on homosexuality. But Jesus came and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody can come to the Father except through me. He came to give life and to give life abundantly. But to do that, He came to take the sins of the world away, and we have to address those sins, even when it's difficult to understand. If you want more information on this subject to help navigate you, I encourage you to go to billygram.org under Grow Your Faith. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Fearless. To stay connected, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm Sissy Graham Lynch. <laughs>